recorded like almost an hour's worth of conversation. And by recorded, I mean we thought we were recording, but it didn't record shit the whole time. Which I'm going to blame solely on Wes. Yeah, I'll take that blame. Yeah, Speaking taking... of Wes, my name is Wes Mueller, <laughs> and you're listening to a podcast. <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> I'm glad I put a big pause there. Talking to ghosts. Okay. Yeah, I was, supposed to, I was okay. supposed to respond to that. No, it's called Talking with Ghosts. Uh, talking to Ghosts, sorry. And this talking is, to Ghosts. And this is the pilot, and we're already fucking it up, even though we've done it once before, just a minute ago. Anyway, my name is Michael Kurt. It's Wes Mueller. Uh, and basically, we're we're just gonna be talking about music and um, trying to get things rolling about this. So a little bit about myself. Uh, I grew up in Oregon uh, and then moved to Hawaii and then back to Portland because it was obviously where I belonged. Uh, and I've been making music for a really long time, uh, in my opinion, which is not very long in most people's opinion. <laughs> if you think all those people have been there for like. We've been making music for 25 years. It's like, I've been alive that long. But, uh, you know, I had pictures of myself when I was like six-ish, uh, just with a stupid little plastic guitar, naked, of course. And it hasn't progressed much since then. Yeah, I still think. naked. Still naked all naked the time. Naked at the moment. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I started making industrial music when I was 14, so I really loved it. Um, and I, I'm in a band called Product right now, uh, which I do all the work for. And then I make Wes drive around with me all the, everywhere in the country and hopefully the world soon and uh we play music in front of people and it's really fun yeah it's a lot of fun uh yeah i like i said my name's wes mueller uh i grew up in southern utah and i was in a couple punk bands there my my background is more in punk music um i didn't get into industrial music until i moved to portland in 2006 which is when i met michael which means we have been friends for eight years now but uh you know, around that time, I had another friend who kind of introduced a little bit, like V&V, Wumpscut, um, Hansel and Gretel, wherever you want to put them on that spectrum. <laughs> uh, great people, by the way. We've played with them. Super <laughs> Just nice. this year, yeah. Yeah, super nice, nice. people. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, I had kind of a punk background until then, and uh, then I met Michael here in Portland, uh, I had gone to high school with somebody that he had known in Hawaii by some crazy happenstance. So, <laughs> it was weird. Uh, I sent him a message, and he was playing a show with this band called Injected. So I went down and checked that out, and we have been friends ever since. <laughs> Man, we didn't say this the first time around, but that was the fucking worst show of my whole life. Uh, it was fun though. It looked fun for the two seconds that the music played. Yeah, until you knocked the laptop <laughs> into the audience. Twice. So what happened was uh, we were very ill prepared. This being like our third show, and it was like a lot of people at this like battle of bands type event, and we were definitely the weirdest people there for sure. But also like I hadn't secured a laptop on my laptop stand really, and it just flew off into the audience fucking twice, and the second time dislodged the hard drive. So there was like maybe 30 seconds of music total. Oh, there was more than that. You guys was got it? through a few songs. Did we? Yeah, yeah. I you don't got remember. you got into your set. Oh man. Because Justin had time to get half naked. Oh, that's right. That's right. I, I it's coming back now, flooding back the memories. Yeah, that, that was a weird time. Uh, but yeah, it was strange that we kind of knew each other through this connection of person um, who may or may not be listening to this, but uh it's it's weird it's a weird thing but i'm happy that we met and here eight years later we're sitting around just bullshitting like like we do yeah do you remember did i send you a message through zanga or myspace <laughs> that's, a good, that's a good question you know i brought up zanga the other day and someone was like what the fuck are you talking about it's like wait how old are you and she was like 18 and it's not my work uh, just not just someone creepy but you've barely heard of myspace and i was like oh my god you don't know what zanga is i uh, thought i was weird for not having a dead journal <laughs> uh, deep, dead cuts, journal. deep cuts oh man yeah i never had a life journal um all of my friends were on Zanga when I was that age. The age at which you Zanga. <laughs> <laughs> the, the worst age of your life, apparently. Yeah, that, that's that age that occurs right about the time that you hit puberty to right about the time that you're fed up with puberty. <laughs> so just a lot of hate. Yeah. Just, just I remember getting corrected. So I had a lot of weird friends from like the club scene in Hawaii, which I... I I was 14 at the time when I started going to the clubs in Hawaii, and uh, I had a lot of weird friends that were much older than me, and they'd correct me on spelling and shit all the time. And I was like, fuck that guy. I don't know how to spell tomorrow. 
I didn't. Does apparently. it have two M's or two R's? No. Two R's? Two R's. Okay. I learned that. <laughs> but we have at our- the ripe age of 14. So, funny story. <laughs> when I was 21, I discovered that the word faucet didn't have an L in it. Faucet. I remember I, this. Yes. I, uh, I was going around my life until I was 21 years old saying the word faucet. Oh, faucet. That's faucet. Yeah. Um... And faucet was what I thought you turned the water on with in the sink, right? No, it's faucet without an L. And so I, I as uttered, everybody but you knows. as everybody but me knows. So you know, I uttered this this idiocy out at my twenty first birthday with a friend of mine, and he's like, "Wait a minute, what the fuck did you just say?" And I said, "You know, turn turn on the faucet. I need to get some water." And I was really drunk at the time, which I don't do anymore. But it's weird. And. Uh, you know, and he was like, you know there's not an L in there, right? And I didn't believe him, and we got a dictionary out, and I was fucking very wrong. And the next day, I called my mother, and I said, hey, what the fuck? <laughs> and she's like, oh, you, you thought it was flossed? How retarded is that? My own mother. Yeah. That's pretty awful. I can't believe she would use the R word. I know. <laughs> Remedial, mother. Remedial. A little <laughs> slow. Oh. Yeah, so, um... Talking about where we are, where we're coming from, where we're going, why why we're here. The answer is to die. <laughs> it's true. It's true. Uh, so, um, if you don't know me, I'm in a project called Reaction, which I do all the work for. Actually, that's not true now, because uh, Michael here has a writing credit on the just, new album. Just trying to spread my seed. So, uh, well, just you trying spread to spread it. my infertile seed. Yeah, so... Uh, <laughs> With the exception of one track, and I'll probably, I think we talked about you doing some backing vocals too, but oh, yeah. for the most part, uh, Reactions Me, um, it's a project that I've had since 2008, I believe, and uh, yeah, it's been a good time. Right. What have you, so we, we personally have a uh, Terminus Festival coming up, which we're very excited for. Probably got invited to play in Calgary for Terminus Festival this summer. Super baller. Super baller. I'm super excited. Like, I'm, I'm absolutely humbled by it. Like, I got that message, and I, I nearly shit myself. I'm just right there in the middle of the Lovecraft bar here in Portland. I freaked out, and my girlfriend was like, what? And I'm like, shh, shh, quiet. I need, to, I need to respond to this real quick. She's like, <laughs> what is going on? I was like, <laughs> And I told her, and of course it was fine, but she got pretty mad about that. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, so aside from Terminus, uh, you know, I have a new, I have a new EP coming out uh, in May that I'm releasing by myself outside of the label. Um, I had an album come out this January on Vendetta Music, which is called Shallow Graves, um, and then just a couple remixes here and there, and this podcast, which I'm very excited for, which we'll get to what the meaning of that is, hopefully soon. Um, but what else What else have you got going on? Um, well, other than working on the album, which is a lot of work, you know, I'm really excited for Terminus. Like, when you sent me the text message, like, hey, how would you like to go to Canada? Sure. <laughs> you know? Like, what else do you say to an uh, invitation to play Terminus? Uh, you know, I'd like to, but I've got this thing where I have to, like sit and maybe pick up my nails for a little bit. I was planning to visit some food cards instead. I haven't finished Breaking Bad yet. (laughs) I might like to do that instead of playing like one of the best shows of my life. I'm real deep into WoW right now and I cannot get out of this. My guild will be so upset. (laughs) Uh, So we're going to say no. Yeah. So So I should have sent the, the promoter back. Yeah, it, sorry. It, it falls on my guild day. Can you can you move that date? Yeah, is your date flexible? Sorry, we're we're running. Uh, <laughs> can you do it on a Tuesday? <laughs> we're we're running Scola Man, so I don't think we're gonna be able to work <laughs> this one out. <laughs> we're, we're, we're trying to we're trying to plan out a Vampire the Masquerade game on that day, but I guess we're just gonna do it in the hotel room. So yeah, yeah, you know. <laughs> That's the sad part about these things is that we know enough to say them. It's true, and (laughs) it's just a big nerd about it, but it doesn't matter. Yeah. Um, So aside from the stuff that we're personally doing, what other what music have you purchased or listened to or downloaded recently that you're super excited about? Um, The thing that I've got recently that I'm the most excited about, and I've been listening to this like if not every day, every other day, is uh, "Sunbather" by Death Heaven, uh, which. 
I think is black metal. I've been told that it's not. <laughs> uh, not Norway, you never were! <laughs> I've been told that it's pretentious hipster shit, but then again, <laughs> I've been told that I've dressed like a pretentious hipster, so... And he does. <laughs> it's okay. We love him anyway. Uh, it's fine. So, yeah. Uh, that it's, it's a great album. If you haven't heard it, it's like... It's... I would definitely put it in the black metal camp with my lack of knowledge about anything metal. Uh, it's got kind of those like shredding guitar riffs, like the really fast tremolo picking. It's got the screaming, the blast beats, but it's also got like these awesome major tonalities, which I think when when you mix kind of that major sort of feeling, like that kind of upbeat, happy feeling with just like brutal screaming and blast beats, the only feeling you can have is utter melancholy and <laughs> which is what you look for that is what for the most part that's what i look for from my music <laughs> it's true sadly true but i feel the same way like if it doesn't have a sad track on that album i'm not gonna buy it yeah like chances are um so you said that people were, were calling it black metal and, I, and I've, I've had this experience personally in my life where it's like being on being like 12 years old on these stupid forums on the internet like black metal if it's not from Norway then it never should be black metal and like all this crazy stuff so don't feel bad because like black metal kids are super elitist and that comes from a place of love really because I really love black metal but uh, just just to be fair like I was super into Cradle of Filth for a long time and I still have a weird spot in my heart for like this nostalgic earning for Cradle of Filth and I know that kind of blows my credit as a person who likes music but what can you do? You know, <laughs> we all, we all have bad music in our histories. You know, I used to love Marilyn Manson when I was in high school. You know, I, I I'm sorry about that. I really am sorry about that. But it happens to all of us. Well, for those of you who have listened to us before uh, on this podcast, you will know that Wes apologizes a lot for Marilyn Manson, but he deserves no credit, no credit at all. Wait, me or Marilyn Manson? Both of you. Okay. Both of you deserve yeah. no credit as all. So, so I would say that the reason Michael is saying that I deserve no credit is because of my other music choices <laughs> that currently happen. Uh, for those of you who have been longtime listeners of the show, you know that I get super, super into weird electronic shit. I love future bass music. Tell me, tell me what future bass is first of all. Future, I don't know what it is. Future bass is tangentially related to hip hop. It's like if you took IDM and hip hop and kind of bred them together with some sort of like semi dubstepy sort of thing. In fact, when I found it, uh, it was tagged as post dubstep, and I I think I turned around to you and screamed <laughs> like I found it I found post dubstep <laughs> it's here what the fuck are you talking about <laughs> That's my response yeah so uh, yeah I, I get into that a lot and that kind of led me into a little bit into the trappy sort of world and so there's so much bad trap out there there is a little bit of good in there I promise you that there's a little bit of good in there good luck finding yeah. Yeah, good luck. I've I've been searching for days, <laughs> for months, you know, <laughs> and I I still like have like three good trap songs. <laughs> so tell me tell me about your new album and how this discovery of future bass and trap has kind of pushed its way into your music and how you're working in that. I'll do that, Michael. Okay. I will do that. But first, I want to preface this statement with I swear to all of you that this podcast was not created <laughs> simply so that we could plug our own shit it was yeah the, wait this, what this is our intro yeah we, this, we're allowed yeah we're, we're telling you who we are so that when we tell you who other people are <laughs> don't, you, you, don't lose faith is what we're trying to yeah, say yeah we swear it's not you know just to plug our shit so about my shit <laughs> uh, you know my music when I started out, my Attrition EP, which came out I think in 2010, um, you can find that on Bandcamp. All my music that's on Bandcamp is free, so please go download it. Reaction with a K.Bandcamp.com. Plug it, it, plug it, because <laughs> I will lead it for the ducats. <laughs> we got to that part yet, Wes? You know, it was like straight agrotech. Like, I was listening to, like, uh, Dawn of Ashes, Tactical Sect, uh, you know, that vein of music at the time, and it was just like four on the floor, you know, SE50, 
pitch shifter, you know. <laughs> so, so we, Wes and I have both moved beyond the SE50, and that's mostly because I shorted both of our SE50s due to some fucking stupid electrical problem with my power outlet. And uh, I shorted my own, and I was like, it's not working, I need to finish the album. At the time, I was working on Shallow Graves, and it was really close to the due date. And uh, I was like, Wes, let me borrow your SE50. He's like, okay, I don't use it really anyway. And then I fucking shorted his SE50, and it's just, it's been the blessing in disguise, really. Yeah, yeah. You know, I'm glad to not have it anymore because I've kind of, you know, after after attrition, I put out We Are the Cause of Our Own Despair, which in the interim, Michael, you had got me into uh, post-hardcore and melodic hardcore and that sort of thing, and I kind of ran with that a little bit. And I also was kind of reintroducing myself to hip-hop. I had been huge into hip-hop when I was like 18, 19 years old and taken a quite a long break and so you know I went from doing a straight agrotech EP to doing um, something that I I felt was kind of moving away from that a little bit in, in our despair and that had a lot of like breakdowns it had a lot of hip hop style beats but still kind of like the uh, the industrial fill over the top of it and now like with my interest in future bass and my interest in trap like elements from all of these things that I've been listening to, elements from the black metal stuff, elements from the trappy stuff, it's all kind of leaked into what I've got coming up and yeah, it's just totally totally different at this point. I don't even know what you would call it. Uh, so <clears throat> so the invention of things like Bandcamp and stuff like that like I, I really believe that it's expanded genres a lot. Um, and as I, I mean, before, like when I was putting out I Omega from product, like the first, the first release I had on the label, it was very, it was very pointed, like it was very commercially driven, um, and for that reason, it was very defined as agrotech, and and I wanted it that way, and it was, it was very much that I wanted it to be uh, in the genre. But I think since things like Bandcamp have happened, and people are allowed to tag their own things, kind of make up their own genres. I think it's very, it's been easier to expand our music styles. Like, how do you think, um, how do you think things would be without Bandcamp, first of all, and then secondarily, like, what, what has been your experience with things like Bandcamp and expanding? You know, I think that Bandcamp has had an incredible influence on uh, the world of music. Like, there's so much music that I've discovered through Bandcamp that I would have never known about had it not been for them. Like, you know, if some asshole in Boston had released uh, his amazing project, uh, I probably would have never heard of it, but now I know who Aviator is, you know, now, <laughs> you know, like there, there's these, uh, all these bands that I would have, there's no way that I would have known about them and without, without Bandcamp. And then alternative, uh, or on top of that, not alternatively, uh, with the whole, um, genre thing like I think that's kind of exploded it too like you were saying if you don't have to stick yourself in this little label uh, you know you can do whatever you want it kind of opens it up and you know that you've got an audience whether you're commercially viable or not there's going to be somebody out there who's going to take an interest even if it's like 10 guys scattered across the country not to leave the ladies out 10 ladies too you know, we're equal opportunity music makers. <laughs> Being from Portland. Yeah. <laughs> we have a very open mind. So, um, the Bandcamp experience is, is very much like going to a CD store and, and cycling through racks of CDs, but do you think that the personal connection is lost uh, using something like Bandcamp? I mean, obviously you can search tags and like comment on people's things, but going to a CD store and like flipping through CDs and then presenting them to another person physically and being like, is this any good? <laughs> like, <Yeah>. Please give me this. <laughs> Can I pay you for this? And they're like, no, you can't have it. It's mine. Yeah. Like, what do you, what do you think about that? That actually makes me think of a couple things. Like one thing, I do think that a little bit of the personal touch is lost. Um, you know, when I was first getting into industrial music, I had no idea what any of these names meant walking around corrosion records. Like here in Portland, I just didn't know what it was. And Luckily, Derek is very knowledgeable about the the industrial, dark, everything. So he was able to point me towards what he thought that I would like. And, you know, as much as clicking on genre tags 
gets you in that direction on Bandcamp. It doesn't have that human element. Um, there was another thing that you said that made me think of something, but now I've forgotten what it is. So okay. I guess we're going to have to just move to on. miss that point. But I Jesus. thought it was... So, so you just missed out on like this really, <laughs> really great thing that I had in my head, and now it's lost forever. That's the internet. What did you say? Uh, well, I was talking about Bandcamp and how flipping through CDs is really good, but do you think that... Oh, I remember. Sorry. Go ahead. Uh, you mentioned that uh, you have to present the music to somebody, uh, and I think that's another important thing about Bandcamp. <laughs> if I had to walk up <laughs> to a CD store clerk and hand him Kromschaft or whatever the hell that band's name is, I wouldn't buy it. <laughs> so what you're saying is you wouldn't be able to present them bright pink CDs as bootylicious, fat beats for trap heats. Yeah. To somebody else because yeah. you're embarrassed about your music purchases, but you're happy you made them now. Oh, I'm so glad that I listened to it, but I think Bandcamp is the best thing Guilty Pleasures has ever had. Well, Wes, I'd like to inform you that this is an intervention podcast, and I'm, I'm sorry, but you're a music hoarder, and we need to remedy this problem. You're just downloading everything that's free, just stacks on stacks on stacks. I'll admit it. I know. Yeah. I know. It's I have way more music. Like, I was going through my playlist on my phone uh, look, tr looking for music to listen to while I, you know, grind eight hours away entering data at work. And I saw a name that I was like, oh, I think I remember downloading this. <laughs> and I listened to it and it was great. There was a reason I downloaded it, but I could not remember what it was. <laughs> That's a good point. Um, do you think that now people are collecting music in a way that they're never going to be able to listen to all of it for example like I have a few releases and because I've been DJing recently like I've had to go back and listen to a lot of things but I think that the progression of music releases uh, being so frequent now it's with Bandcamp and SoundCloud and like uh, Witch House especially has got a very quick output method yeah. um, do you think that the the creation of those types of, of release methods have created a situation where you're like not going to be able to listen to everything more than once or twice and just lose things. Like, what do you think about that? Absolutely. You know, I've got something like, I can't even tell you, like I know I've got at least, like if you played my iTunes library front to back, it would run for at least 30 days. Okay. And I am sure that I've lost something in there. It's impossible that I have it. It's it's hilarious. But next time you're next time you're just into fucking around, go to your iTunes playlist and just put shuffle on and see what happens. Like honestly, it's the weirdest thing because you're like, oh, I'm really embarrassed by this song. Like, how did this come up? And then you'll get in these weird ruts with iTunes because it's a, a terrible program where you'll just get like the same artist repeating itself over and over again. Yeah. But I've also realized uh, as a, an aside from that that like the digital uh, medium is created completionist too. Like they must have everything from everybody. And it's like, um, I'm glad that you have my CD, but you've heard it once and you don't remember what it is. Yeah. And that's a weird thing as an artist. I was a physical completionist though. You know, like I got really into imperative reaction at one point and I think I have everything until I stopped being really into imperative reaction. Like, I just had to, I felt like I had to go out and buy every CD that they had put out up to that point because I wanted to have all of it. So I think that that happened in the physical world. It's just become easier in the digital world. It's true. And, and things like streaming and um, streaming versus downloading are becoming a big problem. And it's kind of, uh, it's, it's a topic for another day. It's a very long topic. Yeah. Um, but I want to kind of get through these questions. So what is your goal with the podcast? Like, what do you want to happen with what we're doing here? You know, my on, honestly, my goal with it is to get inside the heads of other creative people. Like when we moved in together, we don't live together now, but when we moved in together, uh, seeing your process when you were working on iOmega was eye opening in that. You know, it was so totally different from the process that I take when I make my music. You know, I just want to see how people make their art. I want to talk to them about how they make their art. And honestly, like, 
I, I just want to talk to them, period. Like, there's a lot of great people out there doing great things that I just want to talk to them sure. <laughs> because I'm terrible at that. Sure, and that's one of the things that um, we had said previously, but you'll never hear because Wes didn't push record. But one of the things we said previously was that uh, it's it's important to me and us, really, to kind of get outside of our bubble because we're not very outgoing people, and I think this would be a good chance to go out and talk to some people we really look forward to meeting um, and other artists that I, I really enjoy listening to their music, and I think that this will be a great opportunity to get outside of the box with an interview and kind of sit down and just just yank stories out of them and have a good time. Yeah. Because generally, you and I have a good time hanging out and just talking about stuff, and it doesn't have to be too nerdy. And hopefully, we won't lose everybody when we start getting on these tangents about trappy music because we will. Yeah, I'll we'll, we'll get on those tangents and we'll get on that Skolomance tangent. We will get them epics. So, so <laughs> we'll get those purple drops. Oh no. <laughs> so, so Wes has a habit of teaching me really terrible things. Uh, but this is something that Wes didn't teach me today that I learned. I learned what the word snapback meant. Uh, and uh, snapbacks, if you didn't know like I, uh, I was listening to uh, in a podcast that we both enjoy called My Brother, My Brother and Me um, that Wes turned me on to. And, and they talk about snapbacks. And snapbacks are just baseball caps with snaps in the bag, which makes sense, right? But I didn't put the two together. So my goal with this podcast is really just to give as many snapbacks as I can. Yeah. Hang them on my wall. Yeah. If we're going to be honest, if we're going to be honest about our goals with like the really podcast, honest. just totally honest, it's them ducats. Yeah. I'm only in it for the money. Yeah, stacks on stacks. Stacks on stacks on stacks. Buckets of ducats. Buckets of ducats. For my snap bags. Is there any other reason to make anything other than to get other people to give you their money? Well, you know, that's why I chose to make industrial music, because I know it makes a lot of money. Yeah, exactly. I didn't get into some stupid niche genre like pop music so that I could get into the real money zone. It's true. It's true. And hopefully we'll get some sponsors to to have a money zone for. Yeah. But right now Personally I'm looking forward to that that uh <laughs> you know what I'm looking forward to. We'll see. Don't we'll say see. their name out loud. I won't yeah, say their name yet until, until they pay us you'll, to say their name. It. So we have we have a tour coming up. I mean uh we just went on a tour, sorry. We have a journey coming up, but we had a tour and what I mean by tour is we played three dates on a very long tour. But only the first three, and one was in our hometown, Portland, and the other was in Seattle, and one was in San Francisco. But we had we got the opportunity to drive for 12 to 14 hours, depending on which trip you take, um, apparently, uh, to San Francisco. Um, and that was a really fun journey. I mean, you really don't know a person until you drive with them for a long time. So. Yeah. You know, we were in, you, me, and Levi were in that car for 28 ish hours, and we. It's not the first time we've been in a car that long. Like we've we've uh, gone on tour together before. We did a tour in 2011, 2011, 2012. Yeah, something like that. Uh, where it was four days, three stops, nonstop, and we learned a lot about each other then. But we learned a lot about each other <laughs> on the drive to and from San Francisco. It's true. It's just it's just a weird experience having to be with somebody for twenty eight hours, and even even though you're good friends or whatever, um, it's just like you don't you don't hear those stories normally. So you don't get the opportunity. There's so many outside influences, but when you're stuck in a car, you just don't have a choice. And I think one of the best parts about that tour, aside from the people, but like driving together and stuff like that, was that we had such a good like you, me, and Levi. Levi's the other guy in product, plays keys. Uh, we're we're all pretty good. Per, like our personalities match up really well. Yeah. Like we never argued or anything like that. There wasn't ever like I want to go here. It's like well fuck that place. Like it was always like hey you want to go to the jelly bean factory? Yeah I do because obviously <laughs> I like fun. Like how dare you say that I wouldn't? You know what I like? What? Ten pounds of jelly beans. <laughs> <laughs> do you still have jelly beans? Are you out? Oh no, I'm out. You're out I'm now. Out. I'm out. I did pace myself pretty well. With yeah, those. that's surprising. Mine were gone the first day, but I shared them with my coworkers because I didn't want to get terribly fat. Uh, yeah. yeah. And they were delicious, I must say. So, what what was your favorite part about that that tour? Not so much the drive, but like the tour in general. I think my favorite part about that tour was meeting uh, the people. You know, we've worked with God Module and The Witch Was Right or not The Witch Was Right we worked with God Module and Mordacious uh, last year when they came through Portland 
but getting to go out on tour with them and meeting the witch was right like those guys are super super nice it was so awesome to get to work with them and then their their light show oh my god their light yeah. show well and Godmother's light show was improved too. yeah really they, good. it was really good you know the whole just you know you you put artists on a pedestal like even as an artist you put artists on a pedestal and you think oh you know they're, they're these 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 rock gods <laughs> and I'll, I'll never be like them yeah. but they're just people like people don't realize how much they are just people and in the case of these guys they were just super super nice people and i think that's my favorite part of playing well my favorite part of playing any show is just getting up on stage and like coming back an empty show with nothing left in me but the second best part is just meeting all these super rad people yeah it's true and, and uh i think that's one of my favorite parts too is it's like when we went to Seattle and we saw the Witch Was Right get out of the little van, we were just like, what the fuck? Like, oh my god, these guys? I mean, for no reason. Like, it wasn't like there was any reason at all. It was one of those walls you put up as an artist right away. You're just like, look at that fucking bandana. Oh my god. And then we went upstairs and met them and they were the fucking nicest guys. They were like the coolest dudes ever. And of course we felt bad for saying anything at all, but... Not was, to them. We didn't say anything to them. No, of course because not. We we may be assholes, but we're pussy assholes. It's true, it's true. Well, uh, you know, from we are Maryland. we are anal cunts. <laughs> oh no, oh no. Um, yes. Well, we are anal cunts, and uh, so you are know, we have to bleep that. No, it's it's not. This is a f- open podcast. We're using that as a band reference. It's true, and not the c word. Uh, anyway, yeah, but, don't use the c word colloquially. It's a bad idea. That's a it's a nasty word, unless you're saying it in an empowering way. Like, uh, no, no, just don't, don't say it. So the witch was right. Uh, who aren't in the band anal cunt, and they also aren't anal cunts. Um, they're very nice people, and they were really fun to to spend those three days with because they were just so open to conversation, and hanging out. That it was really fun, and I had an awesome time about it. I mean. Um, aside from that, like just touring around with you guys was fun, and I really enjoyed everybody's show and meeting new people down in um, San Francisco and everything like that. Um, so, aside from that, uh, we we'll probably have to wrap this up pretty soon because uh, we've already done this once, so now we're hitting almost. Uh, this is almost two hours of straight talk. Almost two hours of straight talk. And I'm sorry if this sounded weird or like practice because we we literally had an hour of conversation. That was not recorded before this, but I promise it'll get better. And one of the things we're looking forward to doing is just reaching out to all these artists and um, having them on the show. Yeah, and we should mention that that is the expected format. We we hope to have uh, other artists on the show every time we do this show. Uh, that's the hope, at least. So we'll see how that pans out. That's where the name Talking to Ghosts comes from, um, because we're just all little, just potential ghosts. We're all just going to die. We're all just waiting to die. That's true. Well, it's that's that's the end, I think. So, uh, thanks for listening. This is the pilot, and I hope it wasn't too weird the second time around. And for all of you who have listened to the podcast before, uh, I hope you continue to listen because we'll, it'll get better. Uh, we've got some really fun guests lined up. Um, yeah, I'm pretty excited about some of our Terminus guests. Yeah. And it's, it's only going to get busier. Like, I'm just going to book a solid, to be honest. Like, yeah. we're going to see some bands, but I'm just going to try to try to get to know a lot of these people personally because I'm looking forward to meeting all of them. Yeah. Straight talk face to face. Yep. Face to face. To face. Um, yeah. Well, thanks for listening. This is uh, Talking to Ghosts with Michael and Wes. Uh, we won't say that every time, hopefully. Yeah. But, um, we'll, we'll introduce ourselves every time because we, we better have at least one new listener ever t- every time or I quit <laughs> well well, he'll quit but I'll keep doing it so anyway no, no. really quick before we leave too. really quick before I leave what do you, what's been your favorite podcast this week it's oh not my ours. god so uh, I have 20 episodes of my brother my brother <laughs> and me left I uh, I love that podcast if you haven't heard my brother my brother and me do it it is the funniest shit oh, like man. I listen to that all day at work. I don't know what I'm going to do when I run out. <laughs> so they're, they're hour-long podcasts. I've got 20 episodes left. Like I've got... Work week? I've got Wednesday, Thursday, Friday left at work. That's 
Oh my God. You're going to be done by like the middle of next week. I'm going to be done before the end of the week. Oh, That's are you? 24 hours, oh, right? Okay. So yeah. Three yeah. times eight? Yeah, 24. <laughs> oh, oh no. no. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> <laughs> so one of the things, uh, not one of the things, one of the podcasts that I really enjoyed this week is Oh No, Ross and Carrie, which is also on the Maximum Fun Network yeah. with my brother, my brother, and me. And I, I listened to the second half of that Tony Olamo Christian Ministries podcast. Oh, my and it was God. the craziest. So creepy. So if you haven't listened to Oh No, Ross and Carrie, it's, uh, it, they're French science investigators that basically go and try all these religions and stuff. And yeah, it's really fun. They do things like overdose on homeo- homeopathic medicine. They get their asses cleaned out with some water. <laughs> like they, their whole tagline is that they show up so that we don't have to. And oh, thank God! Yeah, they go through we some pretty weird to. stuff. Like I don't think I'd be down for all that, especially the OTO one. Which you know, I was really honestly interested in the OTO before, like checking it out. But after hearing the second part of that OCO podcast, I think I don't think I'm going to. Yeah, you know, I had kind of the same feeling. Like, I knew some OTO people in Utah, and they left a really bad taste in my mouth. Not literally, because I did not eat any semen cookies. But, <laughs> uh, you know, I kind of wanted to go and check out what it was like here. Sure. But after hearing what it's like in L.A., I'm not that interested anymore. I think I'd be interested to go to the library and, like, scope the books. Oh, yeah, and just, no like, doubt. Kind of look at their look at their stash of books because they have some pretty weird shit. I'm sure. Yeah. But as far as going to like a Gnostic mass or something, I'm just not. I'm not yeah. that interested. Yeah. But anyway, uh, listen to podcasts. Listen to a lot of podcasts and and tell your friends about our podcast. And especially listen to our podcasts. Yeah. And, and yeah, tweet our podcasts. We Facebook don't. our podcasts. We don't have either of those things yet, but we'll get them. We'll get them. We'll get them. We'll get them. We'll yeah. So so in the future when they're there and you listen to this, tweet it. Tweet it. And, Thank you.